Hey guys, welcome back to part two of building a modular template in Cubase. The last time we did a lot of uh, explaining of how, what we're going to do and we started building the template. This time we're really getting into the meat of it. Uh, so uh, there's going to be a lot of speeding up probably and we're going to move pretty quickly but you can rewind if you want to watch some parts again. Uh, but if, if we haven't met yet my name is Tom Wood and I run this channel called Sifter Studios and on this channel you'll see media composing tutorials, Cubase tips and tricks and freelance talks from time to time. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe. Blah. All right, we left off having done the strings, if I remember correctly, and all of these are contact instances. So we can do routing uh, independently. We can we can do a lot of different stuff, do inserts directly on the track. And we're going to try this way of building the template for now. If you haven't watched the first part, make sure to go back and uh, do that. And I'll be here waiting when you're done with that one. So what I've done in the meantime is to actually make all of the other instances of contact as well. So we have high brass, low brass, eight of each. Woodwind, high and low, eight of each. I've done percussion and I, I made two groups of percussion, uh, one wood and one metal. Drums uh, is like more acoustic drums or damage or trailer stuff. Samples uh, could go in this folder uh, in addition to these contact instances. Synths, I have eight tracks here. And what I did for the synths was uh, if I enable one of them, uh, I didn't assign any instrument at all to it. So if I want to, I can, I can do that after. Keys will be like pianos or, or more band instruments like a Rhodes or a cl clavinet or that sort of stuff. And then I just did eight contact instances, I think, of sound design, or these are not assigned to anything. So I've done all the track laying for the project. And my next step would then be to talk about where would all of these end up eventually? And we talked a little bit about it last episode, but we want to kind of condense the tracks so that in the end, we end up with uh, like six, seven, eight uh, tracks that we can export as stems and group, kind of group the audio in a, like a, a funnel kind of way. So we're going to use a system for doing that. And I'm going to add a prefix to the group tracks and I'm going to add another prefix to the effects tracks and I'm going to add a third prefix to the like the master uh, faders and by prefixes I mean I'm, I'm just going to add a sign to the name of the track that I can then narrow down the search I'm, I'm going to show you it's going to make sense so let's add a lot of group tracks, 30. Uh, I'm, I like to have them outside the folder. We're going to get to different configurations in a little while. Uh, and let's just map them to output. We're going to use a equal sign for like all of these, basically. So just add that to all of them. So all of the group tracks will have at least one equal sign in it. And we're going to use uh, the number of equal sign to kind of represent the funnel. So every track with one equal sign will go into a track with two equal signs. And every track with two equal signs will eventually go down a track with three equal signs. Let's start with strings and I'm going to uh, show you how I would do those. Strings, high, short. Strings, high, long. Strings, low, short. Strings, low, long. And then we're going to do two equal signs. Strings, high, two equal signs. Strings, low. And eventually we're going to do just strings. So this is, uh, okay, we forgot a equal there. So all of these will go into like the high short, high long will go into strings high and low short, low long will go into strings low and then strings high and strings low will go into strings. Let me do that for the other tracks and I'll get back to you. All right, so I've named all of the group tracks and I'll go through them quickly. So uh, we've done the strings for woodwind and brass. I just did highs and lows and then sent that 
them into a uh, new group track and uh, this brass I just to kind of see it better I, I made them all all capitals uh, perk wood metal goes into perk and for the drums I only had eight instances so I, I just made one uh, bust for that or group for the synths I uh, like to group them kind of so I have some sort of control on a group level so I made uh, arps pads, plucks, synth brass, uh, subs, and leads. And of course you can change these to whatever you like. And then I uh, group those by uh, rhythmic and floating. And eventually they end up in the synth uh, group in the end. For the sound design, I actually sent all of these pianos, keys, booms, quirky, SD1, SD2, SD3 to sound design. Uh, I guess we could just make a uh, another group track for the keys. I think we're gonna do that. Let's name this something else. Let's uh, say keys band or something. All of these will be keys. You can sort these however you like. Uh, for example, you could make all of the three equals one go at the end. And, and I think for now, this is easier to kind of see the, the flow of the sound. At the end, I've added three tracks that uh, don't have a equal sign in it, but it has a like a star or an asterisk. That's eventually where all the sound is going to end up. So this would be like a master track, but I've split the track into three parts, I guess, one for EQ, one for compression, and one for limiter uh, slash like glitter. I have some plugins that I like to use. So this is my workflow. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm only gonna use stock plugins in this template uh, that I'm gonna upload for you guys so that uh, you don't need to buy something to get it to work, basically. But we're gonna find some glitter uh, in the stock plugins as well, definitely. Okay, so let's have a look at the routing. Just a little disclaimer, I have a lot of different key commands set up uh, that enables me to, to pull up some things a little bit quicker. Um, uh, I am making a rather big video uh, about key commands in Cubase and how insanely powerful it is and we're going to dive way way deep into it uh, but that's for later so i'm not going to explain every key command that i'm clicking on let's do the high short and high long and to be honest we don't need this we can go straight to the inspector and just do alt shift uh, and say that we want to go to strings high these ones Strings low. And these go to here. I can use the equals. So there's an example of that. Uh, I'm going to do the all of the three equal ones at the end. Okay. Now all of the main three equal group tracks will go into EQ. Boom. There we go. And EQ will go into compressor and compressor will go into limit now you can kind of see there is a flow of things and uh, a great way to see if it's correct is by opening up the channel settings making sure that this show output chain is on and now i can see the strings high go to strings high with two equals uh, and then into strings then eq compressor limit glitter, and and finally just uh, the output track. Next step for me is to color these really quickly and easily. Uh, and we're gonna do that by assigning these to groups, assigning these to master. Okay, while we're talking about routing, why don't we add the effects that we're gonna need as well. So that's gonna be uh, a lot of effects because we don't want reverb from the strings high short to be heard, for example, in the strings main track, if we, for some reason, end up muting or turning down the volume of the strings high short. So we want that to be contained to the group tracks. I'm going to show you uh, how to do this. And it's a little bit tricky to get to wrap around your head but uh, you only need to do this once. That's that's a great thing. <laughs> so let's add effect tracks. Uh, let's start with, I don't know, 20. Just add a prefix of FX. So now I know that if I search for FX, 
I'll find all my effects. So we can say reverb. I'm going to try to keep the names a little bit shorter. All right, we're back and I've created uh, the naming of the different uh, reverbs and effects. And I've also added another group track called all effects for the reverbs that are very specific. We are going to route them a very specific way. However, starting from here, from the FX delay one, two and three shimmer, Gino hall and three different aux effects. I'm going to send those to all effects. So let's set that up. Cool. For the other guys, reverb strings high short. It kind of says it in the name, but strings strings high short is where that's going to end up. And that's all of them being routed to something that's not stereo out. Great. Coffee. Mm. Oh, colors for the effects tracks. These are just my preferences. And I guess we can make a folder called group tracks, master tracks. And there we go. We have routed everything. So the next step for us now would be to add uh, all sorts of plugins to the different group tracks and effects tracks that we have made. So let's go into our mixer and scooch on over. So these uh, brown ones are the group tracks. We have the pink ones as master tracks and then all sorts of effects tracks. So uh, we could start adding the configurations and stuff right now. I'm going to do it a little later and just add some plugins. And then we're going to talk about organizing later. Uh, however, one thing I'm going to do straight away is to select these three tracks and then just set them to be on the right side of the screen always so that I will always have them in view basically. So these are my master tracks. So for all of these group tracks, they are basically done. We could maybe add an EQ to all of these uh, so that it's ready, but um, we can just as well use the built in EQ for that. Add these in and then just turn it on. So it's ready to go if we need to, and we can get it, get it to be bigger and, and do stuff. Effects tracks, uh, zoom in. So we get a little, we can see the names a little better. Starting here, we're going to go to inserts for all of the orchestral stuff or like the, the, the reverbs that we're going to route directly to somewhere. I'm going to use reverence. And in here, you can import your own IRs, impulse responses. And if you search a little bit on the internet, you can find, for example, the, um, the Bricasti uh, impulse responses. Uh, and I, I'm going to link them below as well. So you can find them, but they're out there for free. And you can import them, for example, for this, I'm just going to use uh, the stock uh, IRs, but you can change them afterwards. The reason why is if Cubase doesn't find the uh, the correct IR when you're loading the project, it's just going to cause all sorts of trouble. Uh, I'm just going to use the stock ones and concert hall. Let's see LA scoring stage. Delay one, two, and three. We're just uh, going to choose a couple of different uh, delays. Let's do a mono delay. We can do a mod machine. And for the last one, we could do multi tap delay. For shimmer, we're going to hack this a little bit. First of all, let's add a reverb into a revelation. Let's do add back in some of the highs. And this is the way I like it. And so I like to keep the highs up there and we'll add in a long delay to that octave octaver. So hopefully that's going to add some sort of a shimmer effect. Gino hall, a long delay 
and then we're gonna have just I'm just gonna add in a lot of different effects here and then bypass them so okay so all of them are bypassed and I'm just copying them over or uh, the last three tracks EQ compressor and limit slash glitter uh, we're gonna add uh, exactly that so for EQs let's add a graphical EQ that's fine there's one called studio EQ that one's pretty nice and that's probably it you can add uh, your own EQs uh, if you like compressors multiband tube and vintage and for the last step we are gonna add a couple of things uh, we have a stereo enhancer might be nice to use just to widen a little bit if we need to just a magneto quadrifus again beautiful plugin and that's pretty much it uh, let's add a limiter at the end so we have a lot of plugins now enabled we've got the routing going <clears throat> what we need to do now is to go to the instrument tracks themselves and make it so that all of the short high strings will send something into this reverb so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to enable all of the strings so that's going to take a little while because it's now adding uh, a lot of instances of contact so uh for all of the short violins we're going to move from inserts into sends and i'm going to do send effects reverb strings high short Great, turn them on, leave them at infinity, and I'll go ahead and do that for the other ones. So let's do longs. All right, so I've added now all of the reverbs to the different tracks. It's all up and functional, and the routing is correct. So now what I'm going to do while I have all of the instances of contact and the instruments enabled, I'm going to select all of them. I'm just going to add a couple more things. So we can add in delays and the shimmer, Jano Hall, and the, the, all of the rest of the ones, basically. Okay, so there's not more room as far as I can tell, but uh, this, will be, this will be fine. Let's select all of them again and just turn them on. They would still be not sending anything, but there is one step less. All right, so today we've done routing and we've had a look at how to do that. Uh, we've set up the routing and uh, the effects. And I think for the next and last video, we're gonna have a look at the workflow and how to organize this stuff a lot better so that it's working for us and not against us. So stay tuned for the next video. If you haven't subscribed yet, that would be a wise thing to do if you don't wanna miss the next video. So I'm gonna be back soon with the next installment of this series, but until then, remember that there's always gold in everyone.